Hey, welcome back everyone. We're gonna be going over lab three for two, two, four. That's the vasculature, circulation, and lymphatic system. Just a quick reminder, we're not gonna be going over every single term in the lab manual. We will be going over the vast majority of them, but there are several we are going to leave for you guys to discover either with your TA, DA, or with some lab mates in the lab setting. You can also look at the PowerPoints and the other supplementary material that we have on web campus for you guys. We're gonna start with the first section. We're gonna go over the main uh, branches of the aorta. First of which on the leftmost side is going to be the brachiocephalic trunk. The middle one is going to be the left common carotid artery. And then the rightmost one is going to be the left subclavian artery. The other two you guys can see on other models and in pictures, so we'll leave that for you guys to look at on your own. Now we're going to move into some stuff with these head models. First of which is going to be the internal and external carotid arteries. For that, you can see on the deep side of the skull, we have two separate arteries right here. The internal carotid artery is the posterior of the two. The external carotid artery is the anterior of the two. So you can see a little closer right there, there's two separations right there. External is anterior, internal is going to be posterior. Next we have the facial artery. We're going to flip the skull around and look on the superficial side. You guys can see there's a little red artery that squiggles up through the face. That's going to be the facial artery. Next is the superficial temporal artery. That's going to be on the superficial side of the skull. It's this artery that kind of fans out over the side of the temporal bone. Next is the occipital artery. Find that occipital bone and you can see the artery. The vertebral artery, you guys are going to be able to find on the giant trunk model, so we're not going to go over that. And for the most part, a lot of the other terms for this section for the veins of the head and the face are going to be exactly the same, except for the jugulars, which we'll talk about for a quick second. The internal jugular vein is going to be on the deep side of the head model. The external jugular vein is going to be on the superficial side of the head model. And you can see that right there. All right, next what we're gonna go into is some talk about <clears throat> the arteries of the arm. Starting off, we have the axillary artery up here. We have the brachial artery. It runs through the course of the biceps. You can see it diverges right here into two separate arteries. The one that goes to your thumb is going to be your radial artery. The one that goes to your pinky is going to be your ulnar artery. And then two others we're going to show you real quick is the circumflex arteries. So right here we have this little baby artery. It's on the anterior side of the humerus. It goes in a circle around the humerus. That's going to be the anterior humeral circumflex artery. And then flipping it around to the posterior end you can see the posterior humeral circumflex artery. Moving on to the veins, we're going to look at this side of the model. <clears throat> so coming off here, we have the subclavian vein just coming off. It's a branch of the superior vena cava. Coming further down before it diverges, we have the axillary vein. Once it diverges, on the lateral side is going to be the cephalic vein. On the medial side is going to be the basilic vein. There's a little tiny branch right here. That's going to be the brachial vein. That one dives much more deep into the arm than the others. Coming down here, we're going to have the median cubital vein. That's this sort of cross section right here. Kind of a fun fact, this is usually where blood is drawn if you've ever like gone and seen a phlebotomist. And then coming down again on the thumb side, we're going to have the radial vein. And on the pinky side, we're going to have the ulnar vein. Moving on, we're going to talk about the celiac trunk just for a quick second. Which you guys can see right here. <clears throat> it's this structure up here. It has three separate differentiations. The leftmost is going to be the common hepatic artery that will go to the liver. The middle is going to be the splenic artery that's going to vascularize the spleen. And then the rightmost is going to be the left gastric artery. Just underneath the celiac trunk, we have the superior mesenteric artery. And then underneath that, we're going to have the inferior mesenteric artery. Coming off right here, you guys can see these arteries and veins that kind of spiral down. Those are going to be our gonadal arteries and veins. So that's all we're going to talk about for that section. 
We're gonna skip a lot of the veins of the abdomen for now, but we are gonna talk about a couple for the liver model because these get really, really confusing for a lot of students. If you can imagine, <clears throat> this big blue structure right here is gonna be the inferior vena cava. It runs through part of the liver. <clears throat> a couple terms we want you guys to really be careful with. The common hepatic artery is the one that comes off of the celiac trunk, but once that vasculature enters the liver, we call it the proper hepatic artery. A couple other terms you guys need to know. <clears throat> hepatic veins are going to be all these veins that are inside the liver model. And then this purple one that runs throughout the course of the liver model is going to be the hepatic portal vein. I usually tell my students, just remember, purple, portal and then that usually helps them out quite a bit. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the leg. So we're gonna come back to this model right here. <clears throat> Starting off, we have the femoral artery. That's this big one that runs down the medial side of the leg. You can see the deep femoral artery branch off right about here. That one goes much more deep into the leg. Next is going to be the popliteal artery. Popliteal, if you've ever taken anatomy in another uh, setting, poplite, popliteus is the region that corresponds with the back of the knee. So I remember the popliteal artery is just behind the knee. Next we have the anterior tibial artery. That's going to be this one on the anterior end of the tibia and the posterior tibial artery right there. A couple other ones I want to go over with you guys real quick just to make sure we get those squared away. Over here on the venous side, this vein that runs all throughout the course of the leg is going to be the great saphenous vein. And then further down on this end is going to be the small saphenous vein. For the lymphoid system, we're going to go over just a couple really specific terms that typically are most missed on a lot of practicals. We're going to talk about the tonsils. First of which is this one right here. This is going to be your pharyngeal tonsil. Right here, this one is going to be your palatine tonsil. It's this red strip right here. Don't get this confused with this part up here. This is going to be your soft palate up here. This is going to be your palatine tonsil. And then back here, this other orange one is going to be our lingual tonsil. So that's all we're going to go over for this video. If there's any terms we did not go over, it's because we want you guys to look those on your own in the lab setting or because they are super similar to another set of terms. For example, like radial vein and radial artery. They're pretty much in the same exact spot. So go ahead and take some time. Look over your other supplemental information and good luck in lab, guys.